Hey, this is Notzer, and we're going to look at the settings for World of Warships. There are many settings that you can turn on or turn off that will customize your playstyle and your, your experience with World of Warships. So let's just get started. Pressing Escape, you get into the Game menu. I go into the Settings, Graphical Settings tab, and this is what you would expect from any game. You can change the gamma if your gamma is too strong or too weak, reset it. You can also disable that weird fire effect that goes around the monitor whenever you are on fire. Now this doesn't disable the animation on the ship in game, but it will change the appearance of fire at the edge of your monitor. If there's a weird graphic that plays, I don't really care, but some people do care so they can disable it. All the settings you can run through to improve the performance of your game if you so desire. Alternative color filters, this is for color blindness. I have it off, I don't have a color blindness, but if you do, there's three different types they offer, and they also offer the ability to change the intensity, which is fantastic because not everyone's color blindness is made equal. Some people have it way harsher than others, and it's great that they have some sort of setup and solution for them. A lot of games sort of avoid this completely, and that's unfortunate. As far as audio is concerned, you can dial in the volume for engines, interface, gun sounds. You can make the radio look communication sound a little bit more robotic-y or, you know, processed. I don't really care about any of that. What I care about is sound quality, voiceover language, voiceover modification, and music mode. For sound quality, low, high, ultra. High and ultra are very close. The only difference is you have to download, I think, 50 to 100 megabytes of sound data, and it, it sounds better, but you would be hard-pressed to notice it unless you have good sound equipment, in my opinion. For voiceover language, you can select the standard language that you hear for every single callout. Every single ship nation is represented and a couple goofy ones like pirates. If I wanted to change it to French and have it all speaking French to me, I would also have to make sure my sound modification is set to standard. If it is set to other modifications, they will override my voice language. So keep that in mind. I personally like national, but if I wanted to listen to the anime uh, Blue Steel, Arpeggio Blue Steel Congo voiceover, I could do that. And that's no problem. You could do Steven Seagal all the time. don't know why you would want to, but you can do it. You can do whatever you want. National just associates the sound files with the nation. If a German makes a call out, then German audio is going to be played. French, French, English, English, you get the idea. And it's for your team. So if a French teammate calls out a target, he will yell over my comms in French. But my ship will still be Russian in this instance. It's, it's different from World of Tanks. For World of Tanks, it's basically all or nothing. All the callouts are in Russian or or... Japanese or German. There's not really teammate callouts that exist in that game. So that's the difference. I prefer this way because it allows me to hear German speaking German to me, Russians, Russians, and we're still all collectively fighting the enemy. Music mode. Mixed, original, dynamic war drums. War drums, basically, it's eerie until you get into combat and then drums start getting really intense. For dynamic, it is a combination of multiple audio so, uh, sound files that are chill to very intense and the very intense ones play when you're in active combat or very close to the enemy. Original will just play three or four songs the entire game and they're going to be the entire song. They, they won't react to the game at all. Pretty standard audio, honestly, which you're familiar with with other games probably. Mixed is a combination of original and dynamic. And this is going to play original a little bit more, and it'll be a more natural transition. For dynamic, I find that sometimes it will transition in a really abrupt manner. So that's why I keep it on mixed. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. For controls, there's a lot of things to digest here. Weapon group camera. What does weapon group camera do? So every ship has weapon groups, and every ship has different weapon group cameras. Some ships 
only have one, like the Dunkirk, with all three gun turrets facing forward and all very tight together, you only need one camera. Now, when I'm in third person, there is a neutral camera that is placed directly center. It's center aligned on the ship. There's no, uh, there's no leaning towards the forward or the aft for the perspective. When I'm zoomed in, however, then it goes to one of the two weapon groups in this example for the Moskva. Now, I believe it went to the back one, and I'm just going to press C to cycle. And it did indeed go to the back point of view weapon camera. And you can press C all you want to cycle. You might be wondering, why would I want to do this, Notzer? Well, when you're around an island, a back weapon group might not be able to see an enemy as soon as the forward weapon group. And as soon as you see that enemy, you want to engage that enemy. So a good technique to do is when you're coming up and approaching an island, you want to make sure that your perspective is set up so you can maximize your performance. And pressing C will allow you to do that to find the camera that's right in that scenario. And I think it's a great thing to do. Everyone should do it. And you do want to keep the weapon groups. Otherwise, I believe this is going to be... I think this is going to just have a, a neutral camera. And it's not going to be over one of the, the uh, weapons. It's on by default. I keep it on by default. Track the lock target. It does exactly what it says. When a target is selected, it will track the target. And this crosshair is an indicator that you have a target selected. Now, I can press X to deselect the target or select another target manually, but it will also do it automatically when I am hovering over the target. This is useful if you want to target someone that's right behind them. You know, you're looking to go after the low health target. That's when I use manual cycling with X. And again, why would you not want this? If this was disabled, then you wouldn't benefit from the tracking that's built into a target lock. It makes it harder to play the game, so keep it on. Automatically switch the camera between the gun mounts. So when you're zoomed in, it is automatically selecting the perspective that will work best. It still allows you to manually cycle it, which I'm doing right now, and therefore I keep it on. But if it's annoying, sometimes it takes too much control, you can disable it and it won't do that anymore. And it will be 100% in your control to cycle the point of view for, that man the, for the camera. Restore the camera position when exiting free look. So free look is third person. If you hold the right mouse, mouse button, you can see the free look on the screen. Free look on the screen and it will revert back to where the camera was in relation to the guns facing. If this is not on, it won't do it. I can free look away, look back, and oh, now the guns are rotating. Not really convenient. But it's a smoother appearance. So maybe from a visual standpoint, that's why you would disable it. But from a gameplay, hell no. You wanted to refocus on the guns pointing. Limit camera view angles on torpedo tubes. I don't know why you would do this. It just makes it harder to send your torpedoes and to understand what's going on. I would not turn this on. But for some, this might be helpful. Zoom limit indicator. I have no idea what this is. I would only assume that it's going to communicate when I have reached my maximum zoom. I don't know where this indicator is on screen. I think it is right here, but yeah, I don't really see it telling me anything. I don't know what that is. Maybe I'm not understanding it. Maybe it's being miscommunicated. I, I have no idea what this does. I don't see anything on the screen that's communicating to me, so we're just going to move on. Invert Y axis, if you wanted to do like a southpaw thing on a console or if you were like aircraft, then you would do this. I mean, you could do it whatever you want, but for me, it doesn't make any sense because I'm not, I'm not 
flying an aircraft or I'm not doing something that would I would pull up to go down or p push down to go up. I, I just don't do that. So why would I turn this on? But you can do it if you so desire. Enable camera feedback when taking damage. There's a rumble effect when you're taking damage. If that annoys you, this is what controls it. Turn it off and it'll play more like the original Quake where you're running around, you're taking all this damage. Camera is rock solid, not moving. Pro players would prefer that because any camera shake will get in the way of them being as precise as they possibly can be. I don't really care. It's about atmosphere for me, so I keep it on. Always start a battle completely zoomed out. That's just the zoom when you load in. Most people were sitting facing the butt of our ship, and then you just rotate your mouse. You, you roll your mouse wheel to zoom out. You can start zoomed out. I like zoomed in because I make videos and I want to be zoomed in for some of those shots for my thumbnail. Disable shift for aircraft carriers. All this is doing is preventing you from zooming in to the aircraft or your ship when you're in that sort of RTS view. If this is turned on and you can press shift, then it becomes, sometimes I accidentally press shift and I'm, I zoom in when I don't want to. So they added this in for players who were requesting, hey, this is cool, but I don't need it all the time. I only want that whenever I'm shooting footage or whatever. Mouse sensitivity, selecting the crosshair. So there are two types, static and dynamic. Static is scaled to 20 knots, and you'll notice that it is a different scale. Dynamic is scaled to 30 knots, and there's an important bit about this. How am I supposed to calculate that? Good question. Well, alternative interface mode is giving a lot of free information. Now you notice it's not on the screen anymore. If I press Alt, I get the health bar of the ship, the name of the ship, the name of the player. I get this information here, seconds, time to target. I think that's what it is. It is. And then range to target. Now, what does that actually give me? Well, it's four seconds travel time for my shells and because I'm using dynamic the musk claw is about 30 35 knots it's one to one so if I was trying to fire at this target I should give a lead of about four tick marks for you know roughly 4.2 and it's scaled for a pretty long ship the musk claw is if the musk claw was going full speed and I fired right now with this lead I should hit the target right in the middle and that's a good way to understand the firing mechanics. Using dynamic, 30 knots, one to one. If you're using the 20 knot static, it's more like 1.5 times the number that you see in order to get the correct tick mark lead. So I stick to 30, it's great. This information is incredibly important to understanding. Also, if you see the range of your guns, the target, you'll know that you're either in range or out of range, and yeah, that's helpful too. And by default, this is off. You can toggle it with Alt. You'll also notice that there's information on the minimap that is being displayed, the name of the ship, the range of these. I prefer to keep it on all the time. It will be using a little bit more CPU, but it's nice. It's really vitally important that it is on. It, it makes you a better player. Collision avoidance, by default, it's on. I turn it off for the Nazars. Um, this just tries to steer you away from islands. Terrain hit indicator, this will show if you are going to be hitting an island or not. If the target is, you know, behind an island and the shells are gonna slam into it versus hit the target, that's what it's telling you. I use it for when I'm zoomed in. Uh, where is it? Yeah, when, I, when I'm locked to the target. That's when I have it turned on. Alternative mouse controls. This is only for aircraft carriers, and it basically flips the buttons, so it's more akin to an RTS control, where I think left mouse button is selection, and right mouse button is waypoint control. I think that's what it is. I might be misremembering, but alternative mouse controls is only for aircraft carrier control language bar it shows a language bar in your port rotate minimap rotate minimap makes it to where the minimap 
is going to always be from your point of view, I believe. And this is kind of confusing because it, it moves the, the indicators to the edge. I don't really know why you would want to do that. I would prefer that it be one-to-one -one with the, the environment. Every time I load in, team on the left, team on the right, and it, it just it's just easier to understand. I, I don't see the benefit, but if you're into that, cool. Show time and port literally shows the time and port, your local time. Display team lineup. So displaying the team lineup is the team panels on the left and right. You notice they're gone. This is something that has always been in a Wargaming product. Unfortunately, unlike other Wargaming products, I can't customize this at all. I can't make it display more information or less. What you see is what you get. There are mods that will add more information and you can go looking for that. Show smoke screen boundaries. This will add a white line to the edge of the smoke screen. Very useful. I don't know why you wouldn't have it turned on by default. I think it's off by default, so I would turn it on. It just knows you knows exactly what the edge is. And if you're leaving smoke or entering it, the center of the ship must be in it or out it. If you have, you know, the nose out, you're still inside as long as the majority of the ship is inside the smoke. Show both main battery and torpedo tubes loading indicator. So when I fire my gun, it's gonna show me the time on it, which is awesome. Normally, that is not there. Normally, this is the only indicator, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, okay. When the tube is not in use, it will show the reload on your screen. That's what it is. So if I had tubes and they were rearming, they would still be on my screen displaying. By default, that is off. Only the active equipment is showing the indicator. When this is enabled, all the equipment will always show the load indicator, even if it's not the actively selected equipment. Damage indicator, it's the top right corner. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have the damage indicator on the top right corner. It tells you how much damage is done. Enable AA and secondary guns if priority target is set. Basically, if there is a target and I set it, it will turn on it will turn on the, the secondaries or the AA. So I can turn it off by default if I'm stealthy, and then if I take my control, grab my cursor, and select the target, it will automatically turn it back on because you've told the game that you want that to be the case. It makes sense to turn this on, but you know, some people don't want it off. Smoke screen indicator or show smoke screen timer. This uh, offers you a smoke timer that indicates how much more time, how much duration is remaining on the smoke. Friendly, and I believe enemy. So even if you don't have smoke and you didn't drop it, if you enter it, it will tell you 40 seconds left on the smoke. I don't know why you wouldn't have this on by default, but I just wanna make sure that you understand it helps you play the game at a higher level. So I would turn it on. And then detailed ribbons. When I fire at a target, I get a ribbon. The ribbon is going to communicate four things. Penetration, over-penetration, non-penetration, and ricochet. Penetration is 33% of the, or 30% of the total damage the shell could do. A citadel is 100%. That is communicated with a black ribbon, separate from the four. Overpenetration is only 10% of the damage on that shell. Non-penetration is literally zero, shatter on the target. And then ricochet is zero as well. That means that you're probably not going to ricochet, you won't ricochet with an HE, but you will fail to penetrate if you hit a high armored zone. You will probably fail to penetrate and also ricochet with AP, and that's what it's communicating. So those ribbons are really helpful to improve as a player. You can recognize where the shell hit, and in response, see the damage from that shell. And is that all the settings? Yes, that is. That is all the settings that is in the game. Use those callouts. Do the best you can for your team. Absolutely, you want to make use of designated target. You also want to give a lot of affirmatives. 
learn the hotkeys, turn on, turn off settings that you don't need. I highly recommend you turn on a lot of those settings. They, they just make it easier to play the game. Also, in the top right corner of the minimap, we have a little gear. Now, by default, this stuff's off and everything else is off. So grab your cursor, select it. Ship names shows the ship name. Range and a numerical value. It tells you exactly how far away the targets are or the effectiveness. Last known position. It will show a sort, sort of a ghost of the target. You can turn on your surveillance, detectability range by air, secondaries, AA. Very, very useful information to have on your screen so you can be as precise with the ranges of your equipment as you can. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you can be a better player for this. If you already knew all this, sorry, that's what the video was set out to do, is to inform a player of settings that exist in the game that maybe someone, your opponent, is making use of. If you make use of it, I guarantee you will be a more informed and should be a better player for that. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.